Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter. I say Twitter. It's also Apple TV. You can pick us up on um, the Fire Stick, which ain't nobody paying for no more. Also, you can check us out on your Roku platform. We everywhere. Where the hell are you at? That's the better question. Let us know. How about the show? Uh, my name is Rodney Perry. You can hit me up, Rodney Perry Live. Rodney, I don't know. What did I say? What's the email? Shit. Welcome to the show. Mashani Scott on air. I need some help. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> Ah, good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> well, well, I said I wanted some email or something. I can't remember what I said. I was going to make it. Uh, the email is it's Rodney at Rodney Perry Live. No, um, it's Rodney at Rodney Perry dot com. No, no, it's Rodney, Rodney Perry Live, Live at Gmail. At ah. <laughs> I did that. Ronnie Perry live at gmail. My, my brain is just starting to work this morning. Great, great weekend at the uh, Uptown Comedy Corner. Brand new Uptown Comedy Corner this this weekend. Crazy weekend, all weekend, man. Funny, funny, funny shows. Shouts out to Nard Holston, uh, uh, a crowd favorite here in Atlanta, and uh, he had a roast last night. We roasted him, told him how uh, glad we were to know him. And uh, great, great, great show last night, man. Uh, the, the, the club is brand new. The food is great. The staff is great. And uh, the gentlemen that run it, man, just an awesome group of, of guys that run that club, man. A uh, businessman here in Atlanta. Shouts out to the Uptown County Comedy Corner. Next time I'll be, be performing in Atlanta, it'll be for my birthday, oh. September 15th. That's a lot. I was gonna say, wait a minute. <laughs> Your birthday a long way away. Is that a long way? We it's June. I but it'll be on us before we know it. I just I okay. you know what I mean? Like if I don't start you gotta start priming people. Okay. Because people are always like, ah, where you gonna be in Atlanta? You know. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be there. September. September 15th. Around there, in and around that date. But as we get closer, I'll I'll give you the specifics of it. Trina's That's in the building. What's birthday. up, Trina? That's his birthday. Baddest too, y'all bitch. remember that. <laughs> Trina <laughs> says she the baddest bitch. <laughs> Trina, what's up? Trina is in the building. Um, Shani. Mm -hmm. What's happening in your world, man? How are you? How was your how was your weekend? Uh my weekend was it was full. It was packed. So we um we funeralized Cray, our videographer that was here. Right, you told me about the young man. M MVP podcast. So we had his funeral Saturday morning and then Saturday evening, uh, me and Slow attended a wedding. So we had a wedding and a funeral. And then wow. <laughs> he went to work. So we had a full day. I caught him on I caught him on uh Instagram. He's like, Man, I got work tonight, you know. I guess he had a spot in it, then he had to do like a couple of things. I'm like, man, slow your roll, don't slow your roll. <laughs> yeah, he don't slow his roll. He, well, his roll is a little bit slower than mine. And yesterday we had a graduation party, so for your uh, daughter. No, 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 no. Uh a young lady graduated and um 
he they wanted him to DJ the party. So got it. The party, yeah. Jacqueline. Yeah, yeah, they not graduating for a while. Welcome to the show. She says, Good morning, Rodney and Shawnee. Hey, Jacqueline. Shawnee Scott on air in the building. As usual, crazy weekend. Man, so I'm on blood pressure medication, Shawnee. Okay. I take a pill called Lisinopril. Mm -hmm. I take another pill called Amlodipine. Mm -hmm. Amlodipine. Like, it's crazy because I, I didn't understand this too recently. I've been taking these two pills pro, for probably a year. And amlodipine causes my body to ache. Oh. Right? And mm -hmm. it affects my joints. So, like, if anybody ever see me in public and you see me kind of like, kind of maybe moving slower than normal, it's because of this shit. Because <laughs> of that. Yeah. Oh. And, you know, I'm always in the process of, of, um, you know, managing my blood pressure, man. I mean, guys out there, girls out there, if you're dealing with high blood pressure, hypertension, um, you know, the, the word is always to take your medication, but man, you got to have a conversation with your doc because you got the medication, but it may be having adverse effects on you. Mm -hmm. And so I go to the doctor maybe 10 weeks ago and the doc says, hey, you been having any problem with the gout? And I'm like, Actually, I haven't, but my blood pressure was through the roof because I stopped taking the amlodipine. Oh, right? okay. And so mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, I think the amlodipine caused that. I'm like, you mother dog. Yeah. <laughs> How do you not tell me that? Well, like, I need something else. Well, Big Pharma got to get paid. Big Pharma, they, you, man, it, it's so frustrating, man. And so my daughter, my 12-year-old, you know, she's like, I'm worried about daddy. Daddy was kind of limping. But I was taking the amlodipine because, you know, I want to make sure I manage my blood pressure properly. But at the same time, I got to I gotta get something to replace that in my, in my, that I, in my, medi my medication regimen. So uh, if any doctors out there, uh, we would love to hear a suggestion. If you well versed with, I guess this, that ain't the best way to find out, huh? <laughs> I mean, have you ever thought about like doing some holistic treatments? Oh no! How about this? The best way is to fucking lose the weight, fat boy. Well, that too, but you know they got. If I lose, if I lose thirty pounds, get my neck back. I can I can probably eliminate all my medication. So that okay, that's well, that's my goal. Let's do that together then. You lose 30 Let's do pounds, that. I'm gonna lose 30 pounds. You gonna lose 30 pounds, Shiny Sky. First of all, you don't look you don't need to lose no damn 30 pounds. <laughs> yes, you're gonna be a crackhead, you lose 30 pounds. No, actually, see, y'all meet me as fluffy, Sean. <laughs> you ain't me. You ain't really me. No, no. I like <laughs> when when, the, when when I see the ad we run with you, I see a slimmer you in that ad. <laughs> yeah, so I need to lose thirty pounds. I need to lose. 30 but but pounds. you but you look great. Like some people, let me tell you something. Fat people look healthier than skinny people. <laughs> in, in, in my book, you disagree. Well, that's because you're used to seeing them that way. Like if. If you knew me before, you would be looking at me like, oh, we know what you've been doing. <laughs> you've been eating. So, because you're used to seeing me this way. Okay, okay. If, if you don't mind, like, how much you weigh right now? Um, Right now, I am at 172 pounds. That sounds like a lot, but that ain't and shit. Nobody, and nobody believes it. they like, you don't look 170. I'm like, huh. no, no, no. At, at black one point black was, men like 170. 170, 175, <laughs> 180. That's a prime time weight. <laughs> a black woman in America? Come on. That's 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 what I'm I'm if you if you anything less, you you say 170. You go down to 140, guess what's not gonna lose no weight? Your head. You know how hard it is to lose <laughs> head weight? Well, my think, face will be a little skinny because it's a little fat now. It's really? Fat. You don't? Oh, my man, face that's is fat. fat. That's interesting to me because because yeah. like I guess I, I've only yeah. known you at this size. Yeah, if but, I show you some pictures, you'll be like, 
That's you? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> no, but you, but you, are, you, are, you, are, you, you're a good looking woman. You, you, you get your dark skin on. You go mm-hmm. with the highlights. Thirty pounds less. Thirty pounds. That's what I said. Thirty pounds. I mean, nobody's complaining. Like Slow ain't complaining. He's like, I like you the way you are. But it's just what I want to do. It's right. Him, said, it's what I want to do. It's, and but I don't want to. I, I get what you're saying though, because at thirty pounds less for me, I'm a specimen. <laughs> You hear me? You, you talk about nigga in my mind. First of all, in my mind, I'm already. I think I'm fine. <laughs> I think I'm fine. I know yeah, you, you are, guy. I uh, think I'm fine until I catch myself at a fucked up angle. <laughs> you ever see yourself in a picture or something? You like who the who is that? Mm-hmm. Or yeah. like now, nah, I put my hand in the screen and see my little fat fingers. Yeah. And that's how I feel. My fingers are fat. And yeah, see, Ashley, Ashley seen the bikini pic. So they've seen bikini? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-uh. Sh- Shiny Scott, ain't yeah. no bikini pics nowhere. Ain't no way. <laughs> yes, there are. There are. Yeah. So 30 pounds. We're going to do it. We're going to start when? Today? Shit, I'm going to start today. We start today. Oh, Jason says I use CBD and went from 315 to 225 with diet, walking, and detoxing. Hell, CBD is even great for high blood pressure. Hold, hold on, Jason. Hold on, Jason. You over there getting high. <laughs> and you trying to take or ride the period out. I use CBD. What that mean? Because every time somebody talks to me about some damn CBD, like I bought some from a dude. He's like, oh, this is eliminate your pain and this and that. What I'm supposed to do, rub it on my knee or what the fuck? I don't know. Oh, how well, you- it depends on how you get it because I have had some that I would, you know, rub for pain on my legs or something. Um, and it worked, but you, you just got to get the right one because some of it is so strong, it would give me a headache. So you gotta All right. Out. Everybody stop right there. I got a borrow money alert. Uh oh. I just got a text message. Good morning. Now, this person is on the West Coast, so it's 5 30 in the morning. Hope all is well with your family. May I borrow $80 till the 17th? What? $80. $80. I'm going to say yes. A, they must really need it. It's $80. It's 5.30 in the morning. They up, they stressing. But I'm not going to loan it to them. I'm not going to loan it. You're just going to give it to them. But I ain't going to tell them I'm giving it to them. That sounds like a tank of gas. Because I think gas out there is like $7 a gallon. Oh, man. Man, in L.A.? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I like this guy. He's my boy. He needs $80. Borrow $80. Eighty dollars, but you know what? You know what Shani's got on there? Mm. I will lose a friend over eighty dollars. Mm. I will lose a friend over eighty dollars because, at the very least, you got to mention that shit. At the <laughs> very <laughs> least, you got to bring it up at some point. <laughs> Adrian, say what's your number since you give it our money? What's your number? <laughs> Let me text you too. Yeah, eighty dollars. He probably needs some gas. Cause that that's seven. It was like seven dollars and fifty eight cents. What's gallon. your threshold, Shani? What's your threshold for loaning? Oh, you you, you, you a generous money. person. Yeah, I don't loan money either. I'm gonna just give it to you because most of the time people don't pay you back. So I just give it to you. And the most that I've ever given to somebody. Ooh, the most I ever gave somebody was right at it's like twenty five hundred dollars they needed to get something taken care of. You gave twenty five hundred dollars mm-hmm. to another human being on planet Earth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You 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 nice. You are nice. Now now, were you balling? Like was you like at a casino and you just happened to have twenty thousand in your hand? You are like. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> at the time, at the time, finances were great. Like it, that wasn't nothing. Them. Canadians George, what's up, buddy? Canadians George was incredible this weekend. 
That boy came out there and smashed the stage all weekend. And you know what I like being with Cornelius? If you're not going to lose no weight, hang out with bigger people. <laughs> Cornelius, you want to get on this 30 pound thing that we're going to do together? Let, let, I'm, I'm going to send him the link. Cornelius George, do you want to get on a 30 pound weight loss with me and Shiny Scott? 30 pounds. 30 pounds by when? Your birthday? Oh, goodness gracious. Yes, yes. So we not killing ourselves. But you you saying it like my birthday is 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 far away. That's it's really right here. It's it's September 15th. So we got June, July. We got all August, of June. September. Yeah. Well, no, this this June 6th. We got June, all of July, July. and all of August. August. That's that's very that's very doable. Yeah, 30 pounds. We do 10 pounds a month. So that way you can see it eat like we want to eat. You can't eat like you want to eat and lose yeah. 10 pounds a month. Yeah. You, you think so? Right. If I lose money. 10 pounds this month, mm -hmm. yeah, I might come on the show with no shirt on. Oh. Let me, let me oh. tell you. We got to make it happen. Now, I will say this. I went to the, uh, after the show last night. I stopped by the cigar bar. Me and my buddy, they was playing it all the shit I like, Shiny Scott. They played Keith Sweat. Hey. They played BBD. They hey. played like my era. They was all in my era. And I realized I like to dance. You do? I like to dance, man. And I hadn't danced like in years, you know, because, you know, the little kids dance, they be doing dumbass dances. But I'm we like, like to see you dance. <laughs> That's the thing. We like to see you dance. We do, do. I used to be that guy. Shawnee Scott, Rodney Perry, sweating with a silk shirt, rayon. <laughs> uh, crazy. Shouts out to the Virgos. Today's show is going to be incredible. In our second hour, don't leave. We got my man, Dexter Kendrick. Huh? Michelle is going to join us, the 30 pounds. So I'm going to put something together so tomorrow we can all sign up and keep up with our progress. And, 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 and let, 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 Let's go here because, uh, Michelle, we sick of your little cute picture, too. <laughs> Michelle, keep it up, girl. <laughs> Keep it up. Matter of fact, Michelle, text me right now. Text Slay. me right now. <laughs> Slay, Michelle. Jeanette say, I can't have no damn bread. <laughs> how, how I'm going to keep this figure? I tell people, it take a long time to, to get this physique. <laughs> you know what I'm sick of? 2X. Why 2X? Because I'm I'm, that's what I got to get my little t-shirt to 2X. So what size you want to get? I want to go back down to extra large. You know, extra large, grown man size. Mm -hmm. But, and your shirts fit nice. Your belly ain't all in the way. You know, and how about this? I used to be able to buy my suits. Shiny Scott on there. I could go to the store and really put pick up anything and wear it. Now I gotta, mm -hmm. you know, like, as a as a as a as a as a husky black dude, at some point suits stop lo they lose shape. At certain sizes, they lose shape. So, like say for instance, the minute you hit a 50, 50 regular, that's just a square. That's oh, fifty exactly. inches across. 50, it's, it's just it's your it don't have no like. You know, they don't tailor it to you. You know what you lose? They can cut it, but you still, your body is a square. <laughs> you SpongeBob square pants. Oh, man. Am oh. I yelling? I feel like I'm yelling this morning. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I must be excited. You excited. You excited. I'm excited. Great weekend. Uh, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't do it any better. Uh, let, let's do this. Question of the day. Okay. In 40 years, this is a good one, Shiny Scott on there. What will people be nostalgic for? Ooh. 40 years? 
What up, D? 40 years. So I'll be 80. So when I'm 80, wow. Okay, so I can't. Okay, so. So as, and like whatever's hot now, what will you look back and go, man, back in the day, boy? I had that MacBook. I had all Apple products. Streaming will be different. Streaming will be. Oh, you know what? We will be reminiscing about streaming. Mm. We uh, okay. Let let let's look at the categories. Food. What will you look back food wise and be like, man? Remember they used to have blah blah blah. Oh, let's see. What do we have now? Um. Okay, let's go. Let me go back to when yeah, I was a kid. You gonna go away? Burger right. King. I think Burger King will be a memory in 40 years. Burger King? Burger freaking King. Like, I, like, like you say Burger King is popping in your area, but around me, Burger King, like my Burger King don't even do breakfast no more. What is going on with Burger King? I'm telling y'all, mark my words. Daniel Dugo, I need you to come on and be a co uh, uh, guest host this week. Co-host co -host the show with me. Look, writing. I I agree with with Daniel on that. The writing. Ooh, forty yeah. years. You be telling your grandkids we used to write. Yeah. They had these things. They had these things called pens, and yeah. we would write on paper. Pins. Your kids would be like, "Paper? What the paper. freak is paper?" Yeah, <laughs> it's like. What Cell is paper? Probably. Oh, Cell you're phones. right, Kanish. You got you actually. Right, we got to get through the cookout season too, guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's Jay Henry. Yeah, Jay Henry, stay right there. We'll come to you in a few minutes. Playing spades. I don't, we got to teach them how to play spades. They don't know how to play spades. They play all my these kids. My kids went to college, and they came. My daughter called me one night, one evening. She was like, "Daddy, I'm mad at you." I'm like, why? He said, you didn't teach me how to play spades. <laughs> I was like, I, you know, we didn't have get togethers as much like my parents. Mm -hmm. So we will play, but they wasn't watching like we used to do. I used to be right there going, what they doing? How you play that game? And so what's a pen, Jeanette? You right about that. All right. Pen, what is that? What is that? Um, I, what what do you think about Jordans? The shoe. I think Jordans will still be around. I think Jordans now people might not remember no damn Michael Jordan. Right. Well, forty years know. from now, you don't think they'll remember him? Oh, Daniel Dugar came up with one. Driving ourselves will be a wrap. Yeah, Are you talking about the electronic car? Yeah, and the cars that don't require a driver. The Right, the autonomous. You, now, do you know this? Like, when they came out with the, those cars that drive without, the first ones didn't see black people. What? Right? Are you serious? I swear to God. So, what? It's, it's a documentary on Netflix about it. I'm going to find out the name of it. But this black, that car see everything. But you, well, you don't realize when you're doing electronics and you building in what the computer knows your biases become a part of the computer program so all these white boys programming these computer these cars they ain't even thinking about black people so the car is running over black people so does it though mexican people and chinese i guess the skin tone dark people skin tones exactly it's the skin tone okay exactly <laughs> And so a couple of them caught on fire. They had wrecks and caught on fire the first time. The, you know, you know what that we not gonna have many forty years from now. You not gonna you gonna be you gonna be talking about you gonna tell your grandkids about when there used to be people in the grocery store where you could check out with human beings. Uh, yep. Yeah. Right. I, I think that might be twenty years from now. That might be it. Might be ten because Walmart mm -hmm. already eliminated people. Yeah, and they're bringing in the bots. The bots are coming. Wow, that's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. All right, my yeah. man is here. My guest, he'll be on at nine thirty. His name is Jay Henry. He's a fabulous 
artist on so many levels. He's a a, a saxophonist. He's a vocalist, and he's coming on in a few minutes. My name is Rodney Perry. This is Rodney Perry Live. We're gonna take a break. We come back. My man Jay Hen. What up, y'all? It's Michael Sean, and I know you want to be a podcaster. You want a successful podcast. You want to give your views and opinions, but you just don't know how to do it correctly. That's why you got to hit up ShawneeScott.com. You want to be on radio, and you want to know how to build your radio career. ShawneeScott.com. She's done all of this. I've worked alongside her for years, and I will tell you the information that she can give you is is on a value level that I can't even put a price on it. All you have to do is go to ShawneeScott.com. Your future, right now. That's it. It's Michael Sean. Yank it. What up, party people? It's your boy, Rodney Perry. You're tuned in to Rodney Perry Live. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We rock this show every day for between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're in the Midwest, we rock from 8 to 10. If you're on the West Coast, it's early as hell. My guest for the day, in this hour, Mr. J. Henry, welcome to the show, Jay Hen. What's good, man? Good to be back on with you. You know what? First of all, turn your throat down. I don't, I don't know what's <laughs> going on. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I'm mad. I'm mad that your voice sound incredible. Uh, Jay Henry, um, when we met, you was uh, already a champion in music, man, a, a world renowned saxophonist, and then you made a pivot. And you start singing, Shani Scott. Can we put it? Put this man's voice up under us. Yeah. Turn it off. I can't take it. Turn it off. Ladies and gentlemen, fabulous, fabulous vocalist with us this morning. Uh, his real name is Jernell. Uh, his brother is a fabulous artist as well. I got to get your brother on here, man. Absolutely. I, I see my girl Michelle. She done popped in. She done got glamorous. He sounds like Barry White. You do sound like Barry White. So how deliberate was that for you to feel that Barry White void? Man, I had um I had hit behind the sax for so long and everybody kept telling me you need to go ahead on and do it. There's no more Barry White's Isaac did, everybody that was feeling that uh bass baritone void was gone. And my thing was you know, I was comfortable with the sax, and it didn't make sense to do anything vocal if I didn't have anything to say. You know what I mean? Got it. But, you know, when you try it out on stage and you find out the audience love it, you know, it, it wins. So we started doing it, and, of course, I've been a Barry fan since I was a child. I always wanted to sound like him. And by the time I was 14, I did. So, you know, might as well do something with it. And it's funny, um, the lady said I sound like Barry. I met Barry's daughter, his oldest daughter, two years ago, right during the pandemic. And okay. as soon as I said hello to her, she started crying. Wow. Yeah. Now, now, now I mean, you, you already in that register. Is it a chore for you to sing in that register? Believe it or not, um, the singing is the easiest part. Um, his speaking voice is deeper than his singing voice. So it's um, 
It's just natural. Wow. Yeah, super easy. You could sing like Barry White if you even sing. Uh, just First have a of all, voice. I've been kicked out of choirs, okay? <laughs> no, no. I ain't never told you the story, Jay Here, You know, me and Jay Here no. are real friends. So I joined the Navy, <laughs> and on the weekends, to get out of work, you would join the choir. So I'm in the, I'm I'm back there past me now, don't you know save you. I'm singing. <laughs> the choir director go, all right, uh, y'all two rows. Let me see something. Okay, y'all sing. It's like, okay, okay. Okay, y'all, that row, y'all sing. He said, okay. He said, you, come here. And put me the hell out, just like that. <laughs> I was the lip singer. I was. I should have been lip singer. I wouldn't have got caught. <laughs> but I was trying to actually sing. Shouts out to Crystal Powell watching the show. Thank you, Crystal. I got to get you on here to be one of my co-hosts, man. Jay Hen, man. Uh, you got a new product on the street. Uh, on the street, you got a a Christmas project. Uh, man, you're always creating, man. Talk to me about being kinetic in this new music landscape. Man, um, honestly, the pandemic probably was the best thing that could have happened for us as entertainers. Where we couldn't get on stage physically and make our money, it allowed us to really sit back and fall in love again with our craft. Um, it um, made us really sit back and create as well as network. Mm -hmm. It made it made those untouchable people touchable, you know. Um, for instance, being able to work with uh, Club Nouveau, Glenn Jones, and Lenny Williams. <laughs> oh, wow. You know what I mean? And right. The way it happened, you know, so, you know, doing that kind of stuff and really, it's like as a comedian, before you do a major tour, you try your stuff out in small clubs and work your material. Well, we had the opportunity to do that for two years, yeah. be in our living room, our garage, and, you know, find out what works or re reinvent ourselves, rediscover ourselves. So, Yo, it was just like that. Uh, it was just shot. Absolutely, J.M., man. Um, you, you're, you were a saxophonist. You pivoted into singing. So now are you, like, like new addition? Like, do you do the sax on your shows? I mean, is it still a part of the, sh the, the show? Yeah, yeah, wow. I, I do. Uh, I do. I, I just kind of make it a mixture of both. You know what I mean? Unless I'm doing a Barry White tribute, but for the most part, the saxophone is who I am. You know, my show's more conversation style now, so it, it, it's a production. You know, um, I, I do the sax. I uh, uh, play a couple songs, and then I'll pivot into the singing, and I either fuse both of them together. You yeah. know, it, 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 it just works. You know what I mean? Wow. Uh we're talking to my man Jay Henry. Jay Henry Live, aka Journal. Let me let me ask you this, Jay. Yeah. You singing. I know I don't even know if I'm supposed to say this, but I know you're married. Oh yeah. Singing singers get way more attention than sax players. Oh yeah. Oh, you're yeah. gonna be able to keep it together, dog? Cause if you get single, I'm kicking my wife out. <laughs> you gotta hit these streets. Hey, hey. I have to keep security with me, bro. <laughs> well, good stuff. <laughs> hey man, I want you to stay tight. Rock with us this 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 um this morning. That man is Jay Hen. And Jay, I want you to rock. I got my co-host in the building. Uh JP Justice. Brand new show here on Media Room 360. What up, JP? Yeah, what's good? With you? Yeah, listen, bro, you already know last night was crazy. You I, still got that same shirt on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. Last night was crazy. Uh, I, don't have I that, know you was up late. I don't have that deep baritone voice, but it was crazy in here last night. <laughs> good morning, yeah. man. How you doing, Jay Henry? I'm good, also, man. Also, my homegirl popped in. She's co-hosting as well today. She she said, Roddy Perry, uh, let me in. Put me in, coach. Saw it last night at the comedy club. Miss Michelle C is in the place to be. What up, y'all? What up, what up, what up? Shiny Scott, Jay Henry, Michelle C, 
JP Justice. Shiny Scott and I came up with a thing this morning. We said we're going to lose how much? 30. We're going to lose 30 pounds. Between now and September 15th, JP mm -hmm. Justice, are you on board? Is he froze? Is he froze? <laughs> I think he froze himself. <laughs> Wait, I knew he was fake froze. <laughs> hey, JP, you with us? <laughs> you know what it is? This is what my, don't get me wrong. I, I, I've been told to lose weight. My Dr. Gupta told me to lose weight. She Dr. To Sanjay Gupta? I got Sanjay Gupta. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's who you he on TV. <laughs> yeah. No, my doctor, this, I, I know. That's doctor, a different Gupta, but go ahead. Okay. It's a different Gupta. She's telling me to lose weight. I, I want to lose weight, bro, but I don't want to put the pressure of, because I know people that go mentally crazy trying to lose weight. So I want to try Is to. Is you in or not, JP? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go. Let's go for it. Let's go for it, bro. Let's okay, go for it. Let's right, go for right. it. It held as well. Okay. All right, Jay Henry, right. you got the baritone voice. I don't want you to lose weight and start going high pitch. Well, now I've been sounding like this since I was 160 pounds, so uh, I, I can lose a couple. So yeah, I'm in. Jay Henry right. is in. Michelle, yes, you got I. you got the cutest headboard in the game. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, he got me, caught me slipping. Told him, "Come on in." I'm like, "Well, wait a minute now. I just left the comedy club with y'all last night. I'm still sleepy." Join the club, Miss <laughs> Michelle. Miss Michelle C, are you in? I am in. I got. Look, I've been doing my aqua class. I mean, a new bathing suit and everything. I'm ready. Bathing suit. Yeah. Yay. For the, you know how you do the aqua class, the workout class. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I love it, man. I think this could be something, guys. Uh, JP Justice. Yes, sir. You just embarked on a new partnership, a Media Room 360. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, you are stepping into the AM. Talk to me about the show, man. First up, what's up, Shawnee? I'm sorry, Shawnee. I didn't even say good morning. How you doing? <laughs> good morning, JP. Good to see how I had. I, when I when I woke up, I said, "Oh my god!" And I quickly went in the bathroom, washed my mouth out, and said, "I ain't even brush. I just took the the, the, the toothpaste and ah, quick get up, get on this camera." Um, we're doing a show. Me and Shani, Shani and I are doing a show called "Stepping Into the AM." Stepping Into the AM is just I when I originally did the show, it was for the Insomniacs here on the East Coast. When I originally said, "Let me do the shows," because I couldn't go to sleep late night during the pandemic and all that stuff, I was uh, uh, in here bugging out with anxieties. So I said, you know what? Let me go on live overnight, step into the AM, and let me see how many people join me. Well, little did I know, not only was the people here on the East Coast joining me, but our our twilight, 12 a.m. to 4 p.m., 4 a.m., was overseas um, uh, morning. And those right. guys was just waking up. I had military bases. I had people over in, 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 uh, in, in I was about to say Egypt, in England, in uh, Germany and all that kind of stuff, they were tuned in. But then I also didn't realize that our twilight, once again, is West Coast prime time. So people were sitting at home during prime time. So when I started doing Stepping Into the AM, I got all three markets. I got people from all over tuning in to hear me in my shenanigans. And uh, I, I just I just started doing it. And I said, it was pretty good. That was a pretty good concept. So I brought it to Shani. And Shani got excited about it. When Shani got excited about it, I was like, yeah, I'm on to something. So uh, you don't mean yeah, Shani don't even put, mess with everybody. First of all, <laughs> so people pitch her stuff all day, every day. She don't she don't be getting excited. So if she get excited, it's a real deal. Yes, sir. And then you know I brought my cast of uh, 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 follies. You know my follies, uh, Miss Mona Bode and Harlem Blue. And uh, they, I was like, Yo, y'all ready for this? I said it's definitely an opportunity, an opportunity for something. Now, you know, sometimes you pray for things and don't know how the blessing comes. You know what I'm saying? You you looking for this direct blessing? But God goes, here's the blessing right here. And the blessing was that, you know, I'm on I'm on, on Media Room 360 now. Come Thank on now. You. Congrats. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome Thank you. Thank to the show, Miss Michelle C. Now, Michelle, Michelle invented a game, guys. 
Michelle, tell 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 my friends about the game. Okay, so we'll I invite me and my homeboy DJ All Star created a game called Singer Do. And so what it is, you're singing the melody of a song, but you can only use the word do. So we do, 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 do. I be cheating. Oh. <laughs> so if Rodney was on our game show, we just um launched our game show on um on YouTube. But yeah, uh-huh. so you sing it. We have different genres. We have hip hop and R and B, greatest hits, pop billboard hits, country rock, sing and do favorites, old school TV themes. Party and dances. Any, any All right, stop right there, stop right there, Michelle. We got world renowned vocalist Jay Henry. <laughs> Give him a song that he can do to too. Just give him a throw him a song. Throw him a song. Uh, can we talk, Tevin Campbell? Mm. But you can't use the words at all, Jay Hen. You can only do to. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Shit. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I, I I think that game is such a such a great idea. Such such a timely game. And 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 how about this? I don't know about y'all, but I don't know the words to nothing. So. If if I if you can give me some doodles and, and <laughs> doodling is one of my favorite times of the day. I do do all the time. So hey, what we gonna do? We gonna take a break. We come back. We're gonna go into our entertainment report, and we're gonna try to get in before the end of the hour. We're gonna try to get in, get in. Uh, uh, ask our Uncle Rodney. You guys can all help me with that. And um, this, this show is crazy. My name is Roddy Perry. You're tuning to Roddy Perry Live. JP, Shiny yes, Scott, Michelle C, J Hen. Let's rock. SM Marketing Communications is not only a marketing communications company, they also provide web content management, social media marketing, video and audio production, advertising, not for profit marketing management, and community outreach and engagement. Want to learn more about SM Marketing Communications? Call area code 314-339-7662. That's 314-339-7662. That's SM Marketing Communication. Want your book or music to be published? Skip the confusion and rejections from others. Let BePublish.org publish and promote your work for less. BePublish.org handles it all, from cover design to worldwide distribution. With high quality and fast turnaround, you even keep rights and royalties. Everything was perfect. You made my dream come true. My book and CD look so good. Call 972-880-8316 now. BePublished.org. 972-880-8316. I love it. My name is Roddy Perry. You're tuning in to Roddy Perry Live. Jay Henry is in the building. Jay Henry, when is when's the next project coming out, bro? We're uh, putting the finish touches on it now. Um, we have the single Ecstasy out right now, which is a remake of uh, Barry White's classic. Um, it's uh, entitled Conversation. You're everything. Bringing conversation back to music. It definitely has that uh, Barry White feel to it. But it's gonna be a really good project, dude. I, I I love what you're doing because you brought back a thing. I think we lost in music. Do y'all remember the rap? Like it would be a guy that will stop singing and start talking. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and say some fly shit. You done brought back the rap, man. I'm riding right. in New York with JP Justice. His navigation talk like you. Jay Hen. <laughs> That's what's up. It's crazy. All right, Shani Scott. Mm-hmm. Hot topics. What's going on out there in the world? Oh my God. It is a lot, lot, lot going on today and a lot that happened over the weekend. Um so sad. I, it's, I guess this is sad news, but I guess it can be good news too for both parties involved. So we are hearing and learning that. Um, Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan have split. No. They broke up. Baby, they, no. broke up. Jesus Christ, no. they broke up. Now, Michael is 35. He just turned 35. Lori is 25. So there's a 10-year age difference there. Right. 
I've heard three reasons why they broke up. One one person said that it was because she didn't want to get married. Right. Okay, and I understand that she's 25. You don't need to get married at 25. Take your time. Take your you time. Better, you better get married at 25 and knock them babies out now. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. If I could go back and do it over again, I wouldn't get married to like, like right now when I'm 40. Really? <laughs> yes. You two setting your way. You don't want to marry no old ass person. You people, you setting your ways once you get old. You gotta you gotta get married when you're young and still willing to compromise. Yeah, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, hear you want to talk about it? Oh yeah. Go give me a hug. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Yeah. No, right. Okay, that's one of the reasons. What that's else, Shania? What else are people saying? Um, the reason that I read was because he wanted space. He wanted some space. And then the last reason was because he wanted to get to dating white girls. Hey. Now, what? I believe the white girl thing came out because there's a pictures of him floating around kind of cozied up with a woman of another persuasion. Oh, so that means what that tells me is he and Lori probably broke up a long time ago. It's just we're just now finding out he's moved on. I'm pretty sure she's moved on. I'm pretty sure there's people calling her. She had people in her inbox, her DM hitting her up saying, hey, you know. You know, you know, dudes love. don't let dudes don't let a woman cool off at all. They jump straight in there. Well, yeah, so I think I think they're both going to be fine. Um well, what well, has Steve said anything to you, Rodney? You got it. Steve don't call me. Uh, well, okay. You know, you know, what <laughs> Scott, you know me and Steve ain't friends like that. Okay, no, but it's crazy. First of all, I, I love this this young lady. She's taking her dating, you know, life by the horns, and she's going out and, and she's experiencing different things. I think it's beautiful. I don't think she's a whore. You know, I think not. she's taking her dating professional, and I think Michael B. Jordan didn't want to own that old piece of bubble gum at 25 that everybody else has chewed on. And <laughs> wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> wait a minute, what happened? <laughs> Tell them how you really feel, JV. <laughs> so, wait, <laughs> what JV, you saying at 25 she's an old piece of bubble gum? Well, here's the thing you know, in Hollywood relationships, no, nobody wants to know the other person that you're dating. But if that's the case, you would never get with her. Exactly. And, you know, it probably looked good at the beginning. But then after a while, after you get to chewing that bubble gum, you was like, hey. Do we got a <laughs> Shannon Scott? We got a picture of this young lady. This young lady is gorgeous. She's gorgeous. But come on, man. Old bubble gum is old bubble gum. That's like oh, old oh, bubble gum. Oh, How dare you? <laughs> JP, JP, you a male chauvinist pig. That's like walking around with Mariah Carey, like, hey, look what I got. And eight other people like, well, I had that gum too. Look at this. You oh, call this girl old oh, gum? Look at her. Oh, she's gorgeous, man. I'm not talking about what she looks like. I'm just talking about the fact that you can like what what what, what would happen if my you was Michael B. Jordan and you go to a party and uh what's his name? What's his name with the with the blonde dreads? Um her her boy. Right, and future's there. Or you walk in, and, or P. Diddy is there, and you got her on your arm you, and stuff like that. You know, it's going to be whispers and murmurs, man. But, so, but, but hold on, hold on, hold on, JP. We all, ain't nobody a virgin. Listen to me, bro. Except my yeah. my, my beautiful daughters. Listen. And Shani's daughters. And, and my daughters, too. So listen, right. my daughters, even though they grown, they still virgins. But listen, um, <laughs> I don't want to walk into a room and know and see the other guys that she have dated. And that that's very harmful in Hollywood. That that kind of relationship. Okay, hold on. Let me ask Michelle. Let me miss Michelle see. You've been in these streets a long oh, time. Man. You know you out there doing a nasty. Hey, hey. <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying, Michael B. Jordan can come. He can come to the arm to love him. He can come on home. I mean, he can he can leave. He can leave yeah, he can come on home. Oh, hold on, hold on, Michelle. Mm -hmm. You saying you'll take that chewed up piece of gum, or Michael Jordan? I'll take, no, I'll take Michael B. Jordan. I don't know about the gum, <laughs> but I'll take Michael B. Jordan any day. <laughs> any day. So wait a minute, Michelle. You at the club? Michael B. Jordan come up to you. He can hit that night. Immediately. Ooh. Hold on, yeah. Yeah, expeditiously. Yes. Hold on. Hey, and I'm seeing Shannon Scott nod her head. Shannon Scott said he's so. No, I, no, I did not my head. <laughs> no, I, I saw you nod I your head, Shannon Scott. I was just saying. <laughs> I was just saying. Mm, to Michelle. Mm. I'm just like. No. Ah. 
Okay. Man, listen, Michael B can get, get it. Get it, Michelle. Get it, Michelle. Hey, do you? Jay, here, man. Talk to me, bro. Man, these young kids that broke up, man. I, I think they was a great looking couple, man. I was looking forward to them having kids. You know, I'm Uncle Rodney. I want, I want some babies that come out of here, man. Well, what you think, Michael B. Jordan and and, and uh, 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 Miss Harvey, man? They split up. God damn it. I think the age difference was the biggest factor to me. I think uh, you know he's 35, so he's looking at uh, life from a different perspective. You know. He's self-made, you know, career guy, <laughs> probably knows what he wants and had the success now. Lori Harvey, you know, she's a kept woman. And she, you know, she haven't had his struggles or his life experiences, so they kind of on two different playing fields, you know. Yeah, come on, Jay. He ain't had no struggles. He's 35 and he rich. Ain't no struggles. Put that Nikki. What Nikki talking about over on YouTube? Nikki, let me ask you a question. What you mean, Mr. Jordan can have it any way he wants it? Nikki, don't be a whore. <laughs> Gang, I'm with Nikki. Flap it up, rip it, rub it down. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, lady. <laughs> oh, JP, what's happening to the ladies out here? I, uh, I, I, I love a woman who can take her sexuality in the, in the palm of her hand. And that's what these ladies are doing. And they're letting their palms open when good, good men come around. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody stop. Everybody freeze. JP, can you take us to the back of your office and show us young JP in that photograph? Ha ha. Ha Young, look at this. Look at this fucking gorgeous ass guy in the back. That's JP many years ago. Motorcycle jacket. Yeah, that guy right JP there. has proved that nobody stays looking cute. <laughs> that guy was a heartthrob right there. That guy was a heartthrob. Oh, that guy was the man. I, I met that guy. That guy was some, all right. Shiny Scott on there. Y'all, yeah, I can't take it. I, I I hate to find out that the women around me are whores. I mean, why is that a whore? <laughs> because they know they they have. Well, That's what they want to do. Think about, it like this. think about it like this, Rodney. They're not whores. What they what they are is they know that they don't want to take our BS. Oh no, Toy, shut your mouth. Yeah. You shut your mouth, Toy. She just she talking about she just had this conversation with a friend last night and Michael B. Jordan. Not Michael Jordan, the basketball player. He cried. his old ass. He cries too much. Michael B. Jordan can definitely get it. Are you serious, Toy? Let me ask you a question. Got on there. Give, give, give me the next story, folks, because we got it. We got to get ready to get out this hour. Let me, let me ask you a question, Ronnie. Let me. You got daughters. I got daughters. How hard was it to find out that your daughters had uh, a crush on someone? Well, first of all, I'm a real enough human being to know this. Put me full screen, because I need to say this to the people. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I know. Fellas out there, fathers, listen to me. Listen good. Your baby is going down. Yeesh. Somebody is going to destroy your child. Whoosh. <laughs> I know it ain't nothing you want to think about, Jay Hen. I know we don't want to think about it. Michelle, don't nobody want to think about it. They, but guess what? Her mama went down. <laughs> Her grandmama went down. Oh, Lord. Your grandmama, too. Your baby going down. All you can do as a father, as a parent, is hope you you equip them with the ability to pick a great guy. Uh -huh. I always talk about, let me get my shotgun out. Well, guess what? It's too late. <laughs> by the time they start talking to you, my daughter just told me last week, oh, by the way, Dad, I'm dating a new guy. This motherfucker's six five. How the hell? I can't. You know my biggest fear, Shannon Scott? My biggest fear is that my daughter fall in love with a drug lord or a kingpin. That's my fear. My biggest fear is that they she fall in love with all this crazy and he, Daddy, he put his hands on me. Oh. He put his hands on me. I'm like, hold on, baby. What you do to Pablo? <laughs> <laughs> You need to know all the details before you go. Like, you I need to know you? what what you say to that man because he's a nice guy. 
<laughs> Put everybody back on screen, Johnny Scott. God dang it. All right, give, give, give me give me one more story, man. We got to we got to jump because we got to get my man my man Dex in here for the second hour. It's going down. Jay Hen is in the building. Michelle Cedar popped in. JP Justice, I'm loving this show today. I'm excited. What else we got, Shiny Scott? On here. So I'm in Texas, and this this video was released on TikTok over the weekend of a woman who took her boyfriend's mother's ashes. And dump them hold on. Let me get my mom. My mama want to hear this story. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Let me get my mom. My mama want to hear this one. Oh, oh my god. God. <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute. My mama want to hear the story. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so this young lady, forty years old my age got upset because her boyfriend cheated on her took his mother's ashes dumped them over the bridge into the river and threw the oh. urn too and had somebody tape it and post it into tiktok oh my god so she she was arrested which she should have been arrested and she's being charged with um um yeah, i would like to hear this charge hold on what'd you say mom the charge is uh dumping old people across the uh no it's like uh um, oh, handling a corpse. Yeah, she's in jail. So wait, it's a felony? What she did was a felony? It's a misdemeanor. Okay. It's a misdemeanor. Um, but yeah, she's upset because her boyfriend cheated on her and dumped it. abuse of a corpse. Thank you, thank you. Abuse of a corpse is what she's been charged with. So it's a it's it's uh up to a one year in prison and like a thousand really? dollar fine. She yeah. going to jail because if it's on video that's like it. that, yeah. See you later. Yeah. Wow, that that's crazy. Let's go around the horn. Jan Janelle Henry, Jay Hen, what's your thoughts? The lady she gets upset. She got she busted the guy cheating. The only thing that matters to him in his life is his dear old mama. I right, asked to go to jail. <laughs> wow! Wow! To him, mean that shit. Yeah, <laughs> that boy. It sounds like it's anything he says he means. Uh, uh, yeah. All right, hold on, Michelle. See, mm -hmm. there's yeah. no nothing like a woman scorn, whatever that saying is. Hell have no theory like a woman scorn. Thank you, Jay Henry. I knew you was gonna have it. You poetic. <laughs> But I ain't that petty. Like she, she need to get locked up. That's that's man. The emotional scar she gonna put on that man. Like he already mad. He lost his mama. And she gonna do something that stupid. She need her. Mm -hmm. He need, he need to get his cousin sisters. Somebody need to beat that. She she need to get beat down straight wow. up. Wow wow wow. Oh, is that we doing physicality? JP, yeah. you're hey. a male shoving this pig. I can't wait to hear this. Hey, listen, bro. First off, did you see that picture of my daughters? You was talking about daughters, Shiny. I put that picture up. Oh. Which I want to share this with the world. That's, that's uh, one of two, one of four, two of four, three of four, and four of four. Those are my and, and they're, they're all a little older than that now. Yeah, yeah, they are. They are. Yeah. So here we go. Because so them last are, two is grown. Them last two are crazy too, aren't they? They 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 <laughs> wild. They wild. Just the conversations. They they so wild. They funny kids. But go ahead. All right. So now here we go. First off, I I'm not I'm not too big on 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 death. So you having an urn of your of your mom, I'm looking at you like, come on, bro, you gotta let go at some point. Uh I wouldn't have I wouldn't have cared if you first off, I don't I don't I don't weed smoke, but I heard Nas say if you put the ashes in your weed, you can get closer to them. I don't know, I don't know, bro. I just know that I, I don't want to be that. See what you got in your in your arm right there? I don't want to be that. I don't want to be a jar, a jar of JP. First of all, I'm not connected. JP to Justice, well said. And when I'm I put die, it like this, when I die, I don't even want to be like that. I don't care what you do with my body. I use it. You can leave it on the White House lawn for all I care. Uh, <laughs> you want to say, I told my family, I want them to leave me and stuff me, and I'm going to stand in the living room like this. <laughs> no, but all jokes aside, and, and take me full screen, Shiny Sky, because I want to say this to the world. Okay. My mother is gone. She is not. She is not here. She's not in there. She is not here. My mother has went on to glory. Uh, I still have this, but you know, I keep it right there because I haven't. I haven't. 
You know, she didn't say she wanted to be dumped nowhere. And if somebody for some reason dumped it out, it wouldn't change a second of my life. You know, I agree with JP on this, man. Uh, I don't cherish this thing. You know, I don't cherish this urn. I don't cherish the dust that's in it. Um, and, um, you know, a as we as we uh, navigate this life, you got to be you got to let go and remember the good times that your loved ones gave you. That's the thing. Um, uh, my name is Roddy Perry. You're tuning in to Roddy Perry Live. We're going to take a break. We come back. We got the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Dexter Kendrick. Who psychic. What up, y'all? It's Michael Sean. And I know you want to be a podcaster. You want a successful podcast. You want to give your views and opinions, but you just don't know how to do it correctly. That's why you got to hit up ShawneeScott.com. You want to be on radio, and you want to know how to build your radio career. ShawneeScott.com. She's done all of this. I've worked alongside her for years, and I will tell you the information that she can give you is, is on a value level that I can't even put a price on it. All you have to do is go to ShawneeScott.com. Your future, right now. That's it. It's Michael Sean. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the second hour. Shiny Scott, hit me with it. First hour guest, man, Jay Henry. Uh, let's get my man back up here, Jay Ham, man. I cannot thank you enough for coming on the show, bro. Huge fan of yours, man. What you got coming up, bro? Oh man, uh, actually Father's Day here in Atlanta at St. James Live doing a Barry White tribute, three to four thirty. Okay. We have a few tickets left. Uh, St. James Live ATL dot com. Go there. Also, July eighth, uh, July seventeenth. Check this out. A uh, Luther versus Barry White here in Atlanta. Ooh. Who yeah. who's doing Luther? My man Danny Clay. We oh, Danny out. Clay is cold, man. I like Danny yeah, Clay. We, we sold out a uh, venue in Sacramento in uh, what was it, uh, February, I believe. So uh, we about to bring it to Atlanta and do it. Man, first. that's that's gonna be hot. I'm gonna yeah. be at both of those. The Father's Day brunch. It goes down June 19th, three to four, three to four thirty. And it's Barry White tribute performance uh, by Jay Henry Live, man. Uh, the tickets are available at St. James Live. And that's a great place, great food and everything in there. Yeah, yeah real nice. Hey, man, thank you for coming on, bro. Thank you, man. Be blessed. All right. Stop the presses. It's time. This next guest, I'm a fan. And I don't know if I ever had a chance to tell this guy. But I'm a fan, not only at, at, at watching what he does, but watching how he does it and and the investment he makes. We got him for the hour. Welcome to the show. Love 911 Terrell. Mr. Dexter K in the building. What up, Dick? Hey, good, good morning. Good morning. How you oh, doing? you hit him with some motherfucking super glass. Oh, shit. Dick, <laughs> take him to the next level. <laughs> Hey. My, I, uh, I got a new prescription, so 
<laughs> you got them in prescription? No, these are prescription. I'm trying out new contact lenses, but I always like to wear glasses. I feel like they add characters. So. That's fly as hell, dog. Thank you. Let me tell you something. Your motherfucking square joints. With the- you it's kidding. a little retro. A little, a little I like retro. that. <laughs> I like that. Hey, let me ask you this, Dex, before we get into it. And uh, we're going to open up uh, everybody, uh, and especially for the, uh, our characters on the show today. If you got a question for Dex, think about it. What do you need from folks? Yeah, if you're if you're looking for a, a reading, um, mostly just your birth month and day, and a specific question, or if you have a specific area that, of life you want to look into, that's really helpful to me as well. Just you know, for the interest of of time to get as much in as possible. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, how much do these readings take out of you, man? Hmm. You know, I pace myself. I don't think I, I can't do more than two hours of reading at one time. Anything more than that really drains me. So really, I do two hours in the morning and I do two hours in the evening, uh, set about seven days a week. Wow, man. I, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's, it's an honor and oh, a privilege. Man, I'm honored to be here. Dude, I, I'm I'm such a fan, man, and and watching you navigate, of course, with Mike Sean, uh, man, it, it, it's an honor. Uh, let let me ask you this, because you know I, I got questions. I always had questions for you, but I I, sure. I don't get to ask you. Um, who else has this gift? Because you're not just reading tarot cards. No, no. you doing you doing some some real <laughs> like so. Um, it's a gift that that I that I know that multiple people in a, in a family might carry. So, uh, are there other members of your family that, that have the gift? Mm, you know, a lot of them do, but the people in my family, such as my mom and, and my cousin, who I'm really close to, don't want it. They don't really want to engage Ooh. in that. They they are spiritual people. My mom is also a religious uh, Christian, and uh, and that's not something she wants. She doesn't want loved ones visiting her. She doesn't want. She just wants to communicate with the Holy Ghost. That's it. Until you know, it's time for her to cross over. So, uh, right. so I, I'm looking for the next generation because you know this work. Is generational work. So I'm looking for the next generation of people in my family to hopefully be able to coach in terms of this, this vocational work. But Got we it. all have uh, psychic abilities. We and all he, have psychic abilities. Like, everybody. Like, I, I, I know my son does. Tangerine! That's my homegirl. Tangerine is in the building. Um, I know my son does. I remember having my son in my arms. He's a baby. And I, and I was contemplating to go get a tarot reading, and he was like, he was a baby. <laughs> Dex, he was a baby. He was like, go. He's like physically pulled me to go into that into that space, man. Like, are our kids more connected than we are anyway? Yeah, absolutely. And this is why the bond between grandparents and and babies is so strong, because babies are coming from where grandparents are headed. Right. So right. they're wow. both at two ends of the spectrum, but that, they, there's a bond there. And so our children, all of us are more psychic when we're younger. But then we have to learn so many other things that that begin to push back our psychic energy. Like we have to learn how to rewalk again. We have to learn how to, to speak. We have to learn commands from our parents, how to get food and water. So so we do uh, lose touch with it. Most of us come back into contact with it either during times of crisis um, or uh you know, changing points in our lifetime, like ages 16, 21, et cetera. I, t- I talked to a friend recently and uh, you know, what fascinates me is near death experiences. Right. Mm-hmm. And he told me a story of going to heaven and being told to come back. Uh, I know you, you're, you're connected to these stories, man. Uh, talk to me about near death experiences and what that is for people. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to, I'm going to turn on IG Live. Shani told me to turn on IG Live, so it's going to just be on in the background. Okay. Um, and you're welcome to join if you're on there. I don't know. Absolutely. But uh, as far as near-death experiences are, are concerned, we all have, according to my teachers, uh, we all have three exit points in life. Um, it could be a car crash that, that you know, didn't take your life but may have demolished the car. It might be some kind of a hiccup with our bodies, et cetera. We all have three different exit points. Um, and we have predestined uh, a period of time when it's time for us to leave. So um, near-death experiences are an opportunity for us to decide yes. not to stay. Um, and if, it's, if we still have work here to do, then our guides will send us back. 
Wow, that's interesting, but man. Your death experiences uh, are absolutely real. Absolutely. Last real. question: Guardian Angels. <laughs> Guardian Angels. Talk to me about Guardian Angels, man, because I I know my Guardian Angels sick of me because. <laughs> I'm actually writing a piece about guardian angels and, and cause I wanted to personify them and go into their break room and, and, and see them kind of do their job. And the idea in my head is that your guardian angels probably mimics. He probably looks like you, he probably, you know, like a hood dude is going to have a hood <laughs> guardian angel, you know? And so my guardian angel don't have to stop no bullets, but he need to help me find my keys, <laughs> you know? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, talk, you, you called him a guide. Uh, is that the same as a guardian angel? No, a guide is not the same as a guardian angel. Most guardian guardian angels are a part of what's known as the heavenly host. And I know we've heard that in songs, etc. But the heavenly host are, are, are spirits or energies, spiritual energies that are highly evolved and who have never incarnated here on earth. Most spirit guides have had some kind of incarnation here on earth. And this is why they specialize in lining up with people who have certain work here on this planet, right? So I'm sure that at least one All of right, you stop right there. Stop right there. Yeah. Because, you know, you hear people say, you know, my mama went on, my baby gone. She, she an angel. Now she got her wings. People <laughs> don't become angels. No, no, no. That's a done deal. The, the heavenly yeah. host. Is, is, I, I, is, I, read, I read about that because I started doing my research on angels and people don't become angels, but they could be a host. Well, they could be a spirit guide. So, so all of us who have incarnated here are incarnated here on earth are evolving spiritually. And we get to decide at, you know, at the time of our demise, whether we mastered the curriculum that we agreed to come here and master, or whether we'd like to try it again, which is why the dialogue with regard to fire and brimstone is kind of incorrect because nobody gets it right on the first try. So many of us have been here, you know, uh, multiple times and, you know, wow. it's easy to do, even if you are, raised in a Christian doctrine, you know, the dialogue around Lazarus coming back to life, that's a second lifetime. The dialogue around Jesus coming back to life, that's another lifetime, right? If 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 we believe the Christian mythology. So right. Not, wow. It's not far fetched. Hey y'all, my name is Roddy Perry. You're tuned in to Roddy Perry Live. I'm talking to Dexter. Dexter Kendrick. You can find him at Love 911 Tarot. I'm super excited. He is doing readings today. Shiny Scott on air. Front and center, Michelle C. Front yes. center, JP Justice. Front and center. Yo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, man. Drop your questions. <laughs> the Instagram is up. You can you can go over there to uh Dexter's Graham. Love 911 Tarot. I'm super excited. Open these phones up. Uh, All right. Anybody on the panel got a question before we get going? Yep, sure do. <laughs> okay, Michelle. <laughs> she wants to know if Michael B. Jordan. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> she wants to know if Michael B. Jordan gonna pick her up next. <laughs> that, that, that ain't my question. <laughs> what do you need for me to um to to give you? Uh, just your month and day and uh, the specific question or area of life. Okay, January twentieth, and oh. the question is: Will I ever get married? Aquarius. All right, cool. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Have you been married before? I'm seeing the number two behind marriages here. No, never been married. There's, there seems to be there's, there's two coming up. I don't. I'm, I won't ask your age, but this this dialogue with regard to this five of swords turned upside down and saying there may have been like some kind of a serious relationship previously that didn't make it to marriage, but it does look like there's something coming up. Give me a moment. And this is 22. Uh, around 2025. This is Empress card. It seems like it's a blessing in disguise. It looks like it's a friend who becomes more. It starts out as a friend. Which for <laughs> <laughs> next question is the initials MBJ. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this, this is low. Oh, you, you <laughs> yes, <MBJ>. it, <laughs> no, no. She wanted to know if, if the initials of this 2025 is MBJ, Michael B. Jordan. Oh. <laughs> I got a question, and I got to let you know this right off the bat. I'm kind of scarred and mentally hurt by this name Dexter you have after watching the Eddie Murphy thing back in the 80s. Dexter St. Jock. Yeah, and, and you got this number on your chest. I'm like, is this guy advertising here? What's going on? Um, but listen. <laughs> I didn't see it so, but 
hopefully it is. Uh, <laughs> hopefully. All right, so here we go. My birth not when I tell when I tell psychic when I tell readers and all of this stuff, this they they bug out. So put your seatbelt on. My birthday is November the 11th, 11 11. Mm -hmm. Angel number. Uh, they, they say a lot of different things. I've heard so many different things. I went to a, a reader in Africa when I was out in Africa, and he was um, he, like, he almost sat back and, like, oh my God. Um, what does success look like for me in the next three to five years? Oh my. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I'm seeing showing up here is you seem to be on some kind of promotional campaign with regard to like some kind of a book. Also, too, there seems to be a lot of different ideas running around right now in your head. Your mind feels a little bit scattered, which is normal for summertime. The biggest uh, emphasis during the summertime for you, especially somebody who's born in the fall, you're weaker right now. So you're going to exhaust yourself if you feel like you have to keep pushing right now. Mm -hmm. The best thing is, was find things that you can put on autopilot. And I find that that seems to be a challenge for you because you seem to be an achiever. And also when you commit to something, you like to go full steam ahead. So this dialogue with regard to success is primarily for you, because I'm seeing this chariot card turned upside down, which means there's, there's some opportunities coming up, but you have to wait for it. Your patience has run thin. And in summertime, it's going to make you feel worse about your situation and it can blind or block your vision. So you'll find that and when we get closer to September, things start to move a lot easier. The best way to manage summer, I'm always interested in how we're managing right now, because that creates the landscape for the future. The best way for you to manage summer is to pacing, priorities, and relaxation. If you're finding that it's aggravating you, it's time for a break. Does that make sense? There's a couple different things I'm showing going on uh, as far as I got to do this, got to do that, and you're missing the season. That's not what's happening. That's not what nature's doing right now. So um, well, you will find that your energy it bounces back closer to uh, August, between August and September. In fact, there's some things that show up to light a fire in the ass in August. Uh, so right now, the best thing to do is to to collect yourself and um, and and uh, do some things that that make you feel good about promotion and networking. Sounds good, man. Thank you. Yes, my pleasure. Wow, that was that was dope as hell. Shiny yes. Scott. Yeah. yeah, I got one on the medium side. So um, we talked a little bit. Um, over the weekend about my friend that passed. Well, the big question that we had was what happened because he was by himself. Um, do you need my birthday? No, just, just, okay. <laughs> just, okay. just the name. Um, his name is LaMarcus McCray. Yeah. Well, one of the first things that's showing up, because it's really important for mediumship reading, not to jump into answering questions first, but to jump into identification. And one of the first pieces he's showing me is some kind of a pan with food in it. Did you cook for him? This also seems like um, uh, when they would come to the house because he's my boyfriend's best friend. So when yeah, whenever they came, I always had food. Yeah. yeah. So so that's the first thing that's showing up. Just missing yeah. uh, <laughs> missing your food. Give me a moment. Yeah. Give me a second. Okay. Too was he also funny because he's talking about like something about mm -hmm. like steps. Well, do you have to climb a lot of stuff? I mean, I know I've been to your building, but like I don't remember what floor. Yeah, was. the elevator was out. <laughs> What's So yeah, he's he's, he's okay. The elevator was out when he visited. He said, "God, yeah. you know, it's, it's it's so many mm -hmm. steps." You know. Um, mm -hmm. All right, cool. I wanted to I wanted to start there because we need to identify when in a mediumship reading that we're talking to the right person. Um, that's a whole nother dialogue, and I'll talk about my classes coming up tomorrow night later. Um, but you wanted to know how he passed? Yeah, because they said he was he was driving and he. He he didn't wreck the car, so he knew whatever was happening, and he tried to stop. And he the, the first thing that I'm, I'm showing here, there seems to be some kind of a shooting sharp kind of a discomfort showing as we move up, like up the back area. So I don't know if that is like a, some kind of a blood movement or dialogue or some dialogue with regard to like um, the nerves. But I'm seeing that there was a, a very swift kind of a blackout. And everybody who, who I've talked to that crossed, has crossed over has told me there's absolutely no pain at the moment of death. Um, if we think about um, labor, death can be a labor, right? Some labors are quick. Some labors are, are elongated and drawn out and painful. But, you know, once the baby is out for women who've given birth, um, no pain. There's, 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 there's an absence no of, uh, of stress mm -hmm. and pain. So the same thing happens. Death is also a labor. It's an outgoing labor, right? So our, our spirit is leaving our body. Um, and long story short, he didn't have any pain. And that's one of the things okay. he to emphasize. But he has been visiting you, especially mm -hmm. in your kitchen. He seems like a kind of a, a, a bit of a comedian. Is he funny? He's like, he seems kind of he is like, in his own way, yeah. Coming around like sniffing, He's, yeah, sniffing it's a different kind of humor, but yeah. kind of uh, like, like, um, what's the word I'm gonna mm -hmm. say, like big brother energy, like picking at you, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. It seems to be like an energy uh, a little more to, yeah, more towards slow than me, but yeah, mm 
Mm -hmm. Oh, gotcha. Okay, but uh, he's just showing me him like peeking around and just playing, playing, playing nosy. Um, yeah, he was yeah, always right. happy here, and yeah. and yeah, and usually I would cook. Like I'd have three different meals made so they could pick what they want to eat. <laughs> that sound that yeah. felt so accurate for you, Shawnee. I'm scared to ask. What? I'm I'm scared to ask. Uh, what my mama's doing right now. My mama's been going since 2000. That was the way y'all was so accurate right now. I was going, is this is this guy really tapped in? Uh, hmm. wh what is my mama saying right now? She's uh, she's been going since 2009. And before you before I act before you answer, I felt like my mother waited for me to get to the hospital so that she can see me before she can rest easy. Oh man, it, it, I think that we oftentimes underestimate how sometimes how uh powerful we are at holding a spirit in a body i think yes it's for us to and, and i think anybody who i just had an auntie pass recently who had the same experience her organs had failed her her consciousness which is like a candle the light was very dim almost out and until my mom and her friends came and kind of you know prayed for her to cross over go ahead um, she was there at 30 minutes after they left. Boom, she crossed over. Right. So right. Um, so I wanted to emphasize that you are correct. And I think it's important for us to recognize that we're all mediums. We all have the ability to communicate with loved ones who crossed over. We just need to learn the language. It's a certain type of languaging. And the language really is a language that speaks to our heart. So as far as your mother is concerned, the short answer to that is yes. And this is before I even tune into her. But what was her name? Josephine. Josephine. Got you. Give me a moment. One of the things that I'm seeing here, give me a moment. This is scary, bro. She seems to be she seems to be surrounded by like flowers. These also seem to be red, like roses or flowers. And so the first thing I'm I'm curious is did she enjoy flowers or did you did you she bring flowers? The, she loved the outdoors. She loves to go in you outdoors. She's she, scary. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, one of one of the things that I think is so important is to understand that our loved ones also can feel our pain and they can also feel um, how much we're healing. And, and I think loss is a healing process. And, and one of the, the challenging pieces about loss is to understand that the, when the universe is wiser and, and, and also to understand that our loved ones also want us to know that they're not dead. They're just not here. So it's really just a feeling of separation as opposed to a feeling of loss. And so hopefully loss over time is replaced by little me mementos. And also I'm seeing that she seems to be sending fragrances from time to time when you might be outside um, that make you think of her or, or that remind you of her. There's a number of different ways that she seems to be showing up. Also, she's showing me that she's visited you a couple of times in a dream. I know she has. And Rodney, you said that when you came to my house. Um, one of the things that attached me and my mother, I remember so vividly, uh, it's not flowers, but the smell of fish and chips. Right. And when I, smell, yes. when I smell fish and chips, I can almost feel and hear her talking because that was like her, like we, we, when we was raised that fish and chips was like a Friday thing. Friday was fish and chips. So I can remember vividly. And, it, and whenever I go around uh, like Harlem, wherever I'm, where I'm born and raised at, and I smell fish and chips, it's almost as if I can hear her right next to me. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and so I would assert that that is actually you hearing her right next to you, right? It's, it, it's, it is exactly the frequency of telepathic communication that, that you two have together now. All right, you guys. My name is Roddy Perry. You're tuning in to Roddy Perry Live. We're talking to Mr. Dexter Kendrick. What is the DAC? Thank you. Oh, um, I'm a doctor of acupuncture in Chinese medicine. Oh, get out of here. You do it all, Dick. Well, <laughs> I... I I, it's all under the same umbrella, I think, of yeah. you know, of wellness. Okay, beautiful. I, uh, um, his his uh, okay. Instagram is at love nine one one tarot. I'm sorry, uh, Shani, I cut you off. Um, and, no, I was uh, just gonna tell Tangerine, give us your date of birth. Tangerine, date of birth. You know, I tuned in. I tuned in to, to Miss Tangerine the first time she asked the question. So if she wants me to go in, I can go in her. Go. Well, let's do tangerine then. Let's do good morning, good morning, Miss Tangerine. One of the the, the, the challenging things uh, that I see as far as finding true love, first of all, is this uh, dialogue about being um, highly selective, which is is totally fine. You can be as selective as you'd like to be, but also then there doesn't seem to be much space in your schedule for individuals who might want to push up. And so I think you have to kind of take a look 
at where the doors open and where the doors close in terms of true love. So will you ever find true love? This magician card turned upside down on top of this Ace of Wands is saying that the universe is waiting for you to make a move, to be honest. And then, of course, right, you, just like it says in the Bible, try me and see. Um, if you take a step, even if it's not somebody that you are like necessarily feeling like you're gaga over, it, it creates movement. So what I'm seeing here is the lack of a flow. It'd be nice if I knew your birthday, because if you are under Aquarius, then there's an important period that's been happening for two years over top of you. But, um, but I think she just had a birthday. She might be a Gemini. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's Gemini? I think so. I think she just had a birthday. Okay, then, then then as we move between now and October, you're going to have to take a look at some of your patterns, especially when it comes time when it involves dialogues regarding trust, intimacy, and vulnerability. So, um, I do see you giving somebody a chance in August. A lot of these, a lot of these uh, short-term situations seem to keep falling flat, and you're the common denominator, my love. And I don't know you, so please don't cuss me out. But <laughs> but but I but I'm, I'm seeing the, there's a lot of things that don't seem to be kind of getting off the ground. And the paradox card doesn't lie. Neither does the magician card. You're going to have a change of heart, but it doesn't seem to come until October when you begin to kind of surrender uh, and and soften. It's going to take until then, from what I see here. All right, next she's uh, Pamela Smith is Pammy girl on 88 on IG too. Um, she's Virgo, August 31st. She wants to know what is the message from her past family member? Um, I need a name, my love, because uh, you say family member, everybody comes through. And in a show that it has a time window, it's just too, it can be too uh, Uncle Ray, like, hey, I, won't, I got something to say. Right. I got something right. to say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we well, ain't talking to your ass, and, Ray. Back up. <laughs> and then we have to wait on the comment yeah. to come in the feed. You know, it's just too challenging. Yeah. All right, All right, Emily. Well, Emily, April 8th. Is Kevin M important in my life? Should I stay in contact with him? Emily, young. Yeah. Her picture is young. She's probably 75. <laughs> <laughs> She's born in 02. Okay, you're right. That's what water will do to you, huh? Do for you. All right, let's, uh, so April 8th, she said, is Kevin M important in my life? Should I stay in contact with him? Give me a moment. All right. Mm. One of the challenging pieces here is it looks like you seem to recognize that he seems to be pulling away from you. Um, also, too, give me a moment. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys live long distance? You don't seem like you live close to each other. Um, that's another piece here. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I, I don't see a relationship for this because I see him getting into something with somebody else, my love. So, mm. he, um, so you, you can stay in contact with him, but your ask was, is he important in your life? And the question here is around boundaries. So I think you're waiting for some kind of structure from this other party. But we're responsible for creating structure and deciding where people stand in our world. And I think you're waiting for him to give you that. So that message is coming. Uh, that message actually started in May. I don't know if you know this, but uh, it looks like you'll be getting some information about this in July. I think he's mm -mm, going to mm -mm, mm -mm. Wow, Dex, quick question. Uh, is there anybody you won't read? Anybody I won't read? Uh, what do you mean? Like, how so? Like, like, uh, like uh, uh, Emily was a, a young woman is there a, a bottom age threshold? You know, I prefer to read people who are 18 and up. Sometimes, you know, people will ask, you know, about a circumstance for their children. I will I will tell you that the door closes on certain private information, even when parents are asking about their children, because it's not information that is for their, the parents' highest good or it's not beneficial to the relationship. So, uh, oh, so wow. it doesn't just get full access to personal business unless it is information that's relevant to the person asking. Um, but if you're in a relationship with somebody, if you're married, yeah, because the covenant says that everything is above the table. So yes, I can look into, you know, what your spouse is up to. I can look into what your boyfriend, et cetera, as long as they know you're your, they're your boyfriend, right? Because um, <laughs> I've, I've, I've been in those dialogues too. And then we have to, you know, walk it back a little bit to say, wow. Hey, this person's moving this way because they don't see you the same way you see them. Dexter, I would ask you about my relationship, but I know my wife will close that door because she closes these doors around here. <laughs> I'm just no, 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 no. I'm, yeah. Listen, I'm, I, I don't want. I don't want to know. No, I, I do, but I'm. I'm just that type of guy that don't want to know. Okay, and then next thing you know, I'm looking forward to these. Things. I'm the same. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, you know, one of the. Let me say this because you bring up a really good point. Um, JP is that. Uh. What's the word I want to say? 
premonition. We don't need, we don't need to know everything, right? There, there are certain things that are really better when they come to pass. But I find that readings are really helpful for people who are feeling lost or like they've gotten off track or like they're in a waiting period and, and needing confirmation that their next move is their best move. So, so you know, I, I often tell people, you don't need a reading every week. Uh, most people only need a reading every four to six weeks because the outcome doesn't change. And also too, a psychic is not telling you what's gonna happen in your life. The psychic is telling you where you're headed by the way you're acting today. So I think that's- So let me, re so let me re-raise the question. I've been married and my marriage has always been involving responsibilities kids sure. uh house blah 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 we're now moving into uh empty nesting how do i how, what 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 what's a, what's the outlook that i'm that i'm walking towards in empty nesting now in my relationships i've never had a relationship without the responsibility and now we're moving into a relationship without responsibility like that i think you're headed into a great period i mean i turned over an oracle card you may not be able to see it but this card says play uh, one of the first things that I'm seeing is is vacation time um, and vacation time doesn't necessarily have to be going uh, other places, although I do see that seems to be on your heart. Uh, but it, it definitely includes and involves spreading out a little bit more and being a little bit more free uh, than I think you've allowed yourself to be for quite some time. Uh, that seems to be hugely important to you as well, because you have a really serious energy over top of you. You've got more serious in 2020, but that that serious kind of energy, um, if we think in terms of nature, um, you know, a tree that is not flexible will easily snap or break. So I, I think that you've created certain structures to keep your head on straight, but I don't think you need all of those structures now ever since this new year. Um, anyway, long story short, I do see you relaxing a little bit more, which I think is a really good prescription for you. Also, too, there's a all lot right. of it. All right, Shannon Scott, who's next? What, what, what did you say, Dexter? Sorry, I was saying that there, there's a lot of, like, you seem to be doing a lot of inner emotional work which is allowing you to um, soften some of your, your more rough edges. It's not, not Please, man, we, I, I got to talk to you later, man. You, you already had me crying. <laughs> uh, I, I, yo, I, I, have, I have built my exterior and built this ogre-type grizzly bear yeah. persona that in my older age seems to be cracking when I least expect it. I'm 6'8". Yeah. So I want people to know I'm a... Hey, camera look at me i am like i am a grizzly bear but lately i've just been getting this cuddly feeling in like anything sends me over over the top i had to call rodney sometime hey rodney man she really going to college bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a great movement when we, when we evolve and this is this is a part of your evolution rashonda doing me being uh, what is that? May 13th. How will I grow in my life and creativity? That's vague. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can answer that shit. You're going to be fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to take some of these decks. I'm going to take some of these. You're going to be fine, Rashawn. To keep doing you, you will be fine. You're a Taurus to bull. You always motherfucking start shit. And you're going to be fine. Good luck. Okay. Uh, Leah is on. She's on IG and here. Um, she's on IG as Faithfully Guided 88. She wants to know, 10, 6, 20, 26, why did Marcus Marquise reach out to her? Can I answer this one as well? Sure. It's probably your bosoms out in this picture. Okay. <laughs> Marcus <laughs> reached out because of this photograph. No, go ahead, Dex. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Uh, you know, we had a Mercury retrograde that ended on June 2nd. So a lot of people from our past will be popping back up. The dialogue with regard to, to Marcus, uh, he just actually just looks like he's bored. He just wants a little bit of fun. If you're down with that, uh, it looks like he seems to be down to shake the sheets. This world card turned upside down. You guys are not turning over a new leaf. Shake the sheets. Did you oh. say shake the sheets? <laughs> we got to get a shake the sheets shirt. See, this is oh. my idea, man. We got to get a shake the sheets shirt. <laughs> Hey, I'm putting it in my vocabulary, brother. I mean, shame, baby. <laughs> a homie of mine used to say that all the time, and I thought it was so funny. So I so, shake the sheets oh, is hilarious. But that's the piece that I'm seeing. This, this is not this relationship's not turning over a new leaf. 
And I think that that's probably at the heart of the question here. This page of swords showing up here too is saying that you seem to be wanting to play hard to get, but if you weren't really interested, you wouldn't be responding to the messages. So let's keep it real. Yeah, and she, she had playing. a second question later that says, will she have a serious relationship? And you kind of answered that. And if you want a further reading, an in-depth reading, Alea, all you got to do is hit him up on IG. And oh, yeah, you can so book a private read get all that extra information we're doing simple questions here y'all all right and also so I'll, I'll say this really like starting tomorrow be in honor of uh juneteenth all month long i'm offering one dollar a minute reading so oh wow yeah. oh that's great oh yeah um, have, you ever tapped, have, you into, have you ever started a reading and someone came forward so harsh or so aggressive that uh that person that you was telling you had to stop what they asked for and tell them what's what's immediately happening. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I've had a warning, you know, a warning. People, I, I've definitely had people ask to speak with somebody, and then somebody else kind of you know kicks the door in and comes through, um, and and that's normal and usually welcome. I mean, that, that, those type of, that type how, of information how do we get you on TV, Dex? Because I see the little white boy on Netflix, and you're way better than him. Oh wow, white boy on Netflix. You know, I, the, a couple different networks have contacted me and I, I don't think that they know kind of where to put me there's been a number of pitches that didn't seem to, to fit so they pitch you they pitch me I, and i'm all i don't know you gotta know. pitch them i know you gotta tell I them what it is i haven't found an angle yet so i, I guess i'm still working on that I, reading, I would love to help you try to figure that out please. oh wow is I, reading I, better I, at, honestly honestly i would appreciate yeah. that. Is reading better in the daytime or at night huh you know Reading is better when you can drop into trance. It doesn't matter the time of day. And Break all, of us, drop into all trance? of us, yes, all of us have dropped into trance. Have you ever been watching a TV show and somebody calls your name, you didn't hear them, right? Where, why is that? Where was your attention? Where was your focus? Have you ever been driving a way that you typically go that has a fork in the road, like either to work or to gym and find yourself taking the gym route when you're supposed to be going to work? Have you ever found yourself like- Yes. A different route? So that's when we drop into trance. Trance is daydreaming. Long story short, right? And so, as long as I can drop into trance, and sometimes I use, you know, some supportive measures. Sometimes it requires some cannabis to take my anxiety out of the way. But, but as long as I can drop into trance, I can read day or night. And oh, if wow. the message comes to me, um, I can I can read because that means somebody is yelling at me. Like I had a, a yeah. So, all right, who's next? All right, on IG, you got Rochelle. I'm blessed. 123. Do you see me with anyone soon, male or female? And how long will it last? Okay. All right. Um, um, uh, Rochelle. Yeah. My number is 917440. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> We know your marriage ain't gonna work out. Okay. So, so Rochelle, yeah. I'm blessed. I wanted to know, do I see a relationship coming? Because I was trying to find a question in here. Um, she wants what, what to know, it? yeah, does, do you see her with anyone soon, male or female, and how long will it last? Yes, um, but it looks a little bit more like a hookup to me as we get closer to uh, the middle of the month, so mm. there's something, there's something, there's something quick and short lived on it on the way. I, I want to know, does she the male or female? Oh, or can you see that? <laughs> uh, no, this feels like this feels like a male energy, but it also could just be a okay. masculine energy. So these days it can be a little challenging for us psychics in terms of uh, definitive male female energies, but it, it feels like a masculine energy for sure. Right. And there's a bit of disappointment showing up here too. We got to be really careful in the summertime about what we do with our intense emotional material because summertime is a season of heat, which is intensity. You can easily burn yourself out. Uh, it's a season of fire and desire. You just got to make sure that you're. Uh, Staying woke is the best way I can say about it. Make sure you're not going. It is a booty call, Jeanette Bush. <laughs> oh, wow. But I, this appointment here is saying that th this person actually doesn't want a booty. They want more. So you're responsible for what you know relationship agreements you make before you you know lay down. Wow. Hey, this is Roddy Bray. You're doing it Roddy Bray Live. We're talking to Dexter. This man is in freaking credible. You can find him on Instagram at love 911 tarot. Uh, who's next? Nikki White Chocolate, six June twenty second. Um, she just applied for a new position at work. Will she get it, and will it be worth the money? Good question. Give me a moment. I see that they do they do offer you and give you the position, but for some reason you seem to regret it. The job responsibilities seem to change 
after you get this position, but it's creating a movement that happens over the next two years where you actually end up leaving. So uh, long story short, yes, you do get what you want, but there's more to the story and in, 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 including the movement that is a part of your natural progression. So, so you're not going to stay where you're at. And that's a good thing, right? So the growth doesn't stop here. What cards are you reading from? These are, this is uh, called Manzel's Tarot. It's available on Etsy. Um, I think his name on Instagram is ArtmanX. He has two different decks. Uh, I highly like it. It's uh, uh, Afrocentric based uh, tarot. And the are these really good? Really phenomenal. Well, am I tapping into the white people? <laughs> <laughs> you know, spirit doesn't have a race. So uh, I think <laughs> it's good. Just, you know, I, when I teach my tarot class, um, I, we talk about what's a good deck for you. A good deck for you is a deck that where the images speak to you. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so then, uh, let me try and find the image. Then so I tell you right now how, I, how how they bought these, how I had to get these. I went to the little crystal room and she was like, I just picked up any deck. She said, no, 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 just pick up any deck. You have to see what deck talks to you and you can feel and you connect with. And I was like, lady, give me the third deck. Like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I got to have it. So but that what, was your first, so that was your first deck. If that was your first deck, listen, the spirit can use anything that you're willing to to use with an open mind, right? I chose this deck because I thought that the imagery was really powerful, right? So I, I chose this deck because it spoke to me. But I have like 15 decks, so that was your first deck, and and your next one you'll probably choose with a different set of eyes, right? Okay. Wow. So and and do you teach a you teach a tarot reading class? I do. I, I taught it last year. It's available on Vimeo now. But but yeah, I do mm -hmm. teach a tarot reading class. And other yeah, because if somebody just go buy a deck of cards, you know what do they <laughs> do? <laughs> well, yeah, it's a, it's a tarot. So uh, and, and it's also uh, in my link on the bio. You can watch a trailer and and mm -hmm. see like the different techniques that we cover. Hey, Shiny, wow, I, I love that. I have played gin rummy fish. Go fish with these cards. I have done everything but did reading with these cards. Well, you know, tarot cards are based on on playing cards. So uh, my aunt, who just crossed over, who taught me how to do this work, only used playing cards. So hey, man, I'm trying oh, to. Oh really? Have, I'm trying to still have moving, wrong here. I'm not trying to have moving energy either way. <laughs> oh, Jacqueline has a question. Jacqueline. Um, you're at Jacqueline. I don't see Jacqueline yet. Um, let's uh, see. On IG, when you guys ask your questions, be a little bit. Uh, be you know kind of detail william 11 jackson 14 i see your question her question is is my i think she said future husband but um 712 722 i don't know if you can do is this on instagram there. it's on ig yeah uh, yeah and uh what was the question again i'm sorry um her question is uh is my future with my husband it says is my feature with my husband but i'm thinking she's trying to say future Okay, so uh, we'll answer the future with the husband. Give me a second. Let's see. And then let's see. Oh, there seems to be some kind of a move. And, and, and what, one of the interesting things about it is I don't know if you both are headed. I don't know if you both are moving together. You guys seem to be moving in different directions. Give me a moment. This also seems to be like very new, like in less, less than a year that I saw. I'm seeing this showing up uh, over the last year. Give me a moment. One more time. What was When was the birthday here? Her birthday is uh, seven twenty two, July twenty second. There's some kind of argument or blowing up, blow up coming up uh, in July, and the good thing is that uh, it's going to allow some uh, unexpressed dialogues to show up. Uh, the challenging piece is that your marriage is not going to go back to what it was afterward because this is material that's been building up for a long time. So you are mm -hmm. in the process of uh, a bit of a transformation in terms of the marriage. Now it doesn't mean that you abandon it, it but it does mean you have you're going to have some honesty showing up. All right, Elena James, eight thirty one. Hey Dex, what's the deal with me and Desrin? Yeah, give me a moment. <laughs> well, does he does he lay around? Why is he? He's, he seems to lay around a lot. Why is he? Is he laying, <laughs> time? Is he unemployed? Why is he always laying around? He seems to be. I, he seems to be. I'm seeing him like just in bed, like by himself, but like in bed. And so I don't know why that's the case. This hangman. He, he, he's de he's depressed. There's so, there's something there because you seem to be waiting on him to change, 
in some way and turn into something that you can work with. This is the number four here. Oh, wow. four. I don't know if he's a homebody or if he's unemployed. I'm not sure what that dialogue is. But this number two is this dialogue for you of can I do better? And this August 31st, right now, all Leos, at least until next March, are being faced with answering some real honest and hard to digest questions uh, about their relationships ever since 2020. And you are no exception here. Um, there's a dialogue here that feels a little bit like settling. And uh, this, you seem to be looking at Desmond like he's taking up space. This, this, I mean, this, I don't know you, so I feel very <laughs> comfortable. Okay, <laughs> September 15th, 1970. I feel like I'm about to get a bunch of money. Am I right? Uh, yeah, there does seem to be a, a sum of money that seems to be coming your way, actually, interestingly enough, around September. So I, I, I do see that showing up. It's in, a multiple, it. It, it's in a multiple of 10, tens. So that 10, here's, 10 34. Oh. Here's a question. Does, does tarot card tune into numerology? Because I keep hearing you say September, September, September. And I do know nine is the month of like change, right? Like ending of a cycle. Yeah, so uh, there are numbers on the, the tarot cards. Um, the tarot cards numbers, which typically the primary numbers go from like one to 10. Um, if we're talking astrologically, it can relate to different things. So so short short answer is yes. There's so many different levels and layers to the symbol, symbolism in tarot. Um, but just for beginners, my recommendation is always um, to make sure that you are using the cards to tell a story. So what are the people doing in the card? What does the card feel like? Does it feel happy? Does it feel sad? Is it a heavy energy? Is it a lightweight energy? Does it feel, um, you know what I mean? Does it feel like it's nighttime? Does it feel like it's daytime? Start telling a story with the images first and then the other stuff can come later. I hear you keep drawing to the number nine though, like, like September, you keep saying September. Oh. September. What, what happens oh. in September? Uh, so there's, there's a couple of different movements happening in September. Transition right? to the fall, first of all, right? So it is it is one of the transitions to the fall. It's also Virgo season, but also, too, we have a movement. Which is the happening. best season of all. <laughs> you know, all my closest friends have been Virgo, so I have to agree. Um, but, but, but just September for these people seems to be. Okay. Like, no, okay. It's, it's not. Not anything specific. It's, so it's, it's not specific to September. It's just the people that's coming on. Right. Right. Yeah. There's, yeah. So you got one more on IG. Well, you got a lot, but on IG, gorgeous. Once um, January nineteenth is a loved one that passed away trying to get my attention through birds. Okay, so since I I can't find the question, I'm gonna just listen to what you said. First of all, um, what's the word I want to say? Birds uh, are also can be used by our loved ones as animal spirit guides to send us messages. Um, if you're saying, is it from a loved one, I, I, I can't differentiate which in this form because you're not going to be able to answer quick enough to give us validation. Uh, but I will say that if you're noticing, what kind of bird is it? If you told us what kind of bird, I could have given you, you a little bit more of an in-depth uh, read. Oh, and speaking of the animal spirits you talked to me about on the show, and I told you I didn't like snakes, and you explained yeah. to me what well, snakes represent change, and then I told you, okay, the ladybug keep coming around me, and it's poisonous. Listen, <laughs> I had like a, a so change. We having to make some changes. I, you know, I had to sit down and do an evaluation. And the ladybug with the ladybugs poisonous... are good, right? Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. A poisonous ladybug, Shani. What's going well, on? Lady, ladybugs are poisonous. Yeah, they're poisonous. And I mean, I, you don't want to eat it, but it's. I mean, they're mm. they're good to see, right? They're good to see, but they also yeah. kill pests. If you bring them in and put them on any plant that has spider mites, they'll eat everything that doesn't belong. Mm -hmm. They're they're actually really beneficial. Oh my God. They're predators. Yeah, they're just dressed. And I found that poison. I found what that poison was. Up, but but they're poisonous. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You found your poison. Then my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get my mouth on in check <laughs> because I was. <laughs> I realized that I was saying some things. So, you know that. That over time I say these things that may be true, but it's like it's the way to present it without being so um, wrong, like right. you know, like I am. So Your yeah, so right now is very business minded. And and what's interesting about it is you're learning the appropriate way to be firm 
and also soft so that people, you know, you don't want people to get you messed up and come at you sideways. And so it looks like also to your attitude is changing and you're going to lose some mm -hmm. friends. But that happens uh, because we can't take everybody with us when we are becoming more serious minded about our direction. Um, those individuals, I don't think disappear for good. But right now, especially as we move through July, uh, you are doing some housekeeping. So, Dex, mm -hmm. let me ask you this. I'm going to take a break. December 11th, Monique Hicks, my friend, she just went into a new season. We're seeing her being very public. Is she going to be okay? Who are we talking about? Monique. The Monique, Monique. Mm. Mm. De December 11th. Don't answer. Hold it. They're right there. Okay. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Want your book or music to be published? Skip the confusion and rejections from others. Let BePublished.org publish and promote your work for less. BePublished.org handles it all, from cover design to worldwide distribution. With high quality and fast turnaround, you even keep rights and royalties. Everything was perfect. You made my dream come true. My book and CD look so good. Call 972-880-8316 now. BePublished.org. 972-880-8316. What up, y'all? It's Michael Sean, and I know you want to be a podcaster. You want a successful podcast. You want to give your views and opinions, but you just don't know how to do it correctly. That's why you got to hit up ShawneeScott.com. You want to be on radio, and you want to know how to build your radio career. ShawneeScott.com. She's done all of this. I've worked alongside her for years, and I will tell you the information that she can give you is is on a value level that I can't even put a price on it. All you have to do is go to ShawneeScott.com. Your future, right now. That's it. It's Michael Sean. Yeah, yeah. What up, party people? This is Roddy Perry. You're tuned in to Roddy Perry Live. We're right here, powered by Media Room 360. Love 911 Tarot is in the building, Mr. Dexter Kendrick. Dr. Dexter <laughs> is not a game. Great show. Wow. So many levels. Uh, I said, well, let's do some celebrity tarot. Uh, Monique has been in the news as of late. Uh, she went in on DL. She went in on Steve. Um, uh, she's under fire a bit. Is she going to be okay? It, it, this is an interesting question, and I say that because uh, I know that you know she's close personal friends with a lot of people, and uh, and I don't know her. And, and I've also been watching as well. One of the things that my guide is saying, if I step myself out of all of the conversation about me and my personal ego, one of the things I do see, she does seem to get some kind of a contractual arrangement. She does seem to work this year. A lot of her opportunities dry up next year. She is also behaving in a way that I recognize personally uh, as what happens when we kind of are burnt out and like still trying to push, if you will. So I do think that she actually needs a bit of a rejuvenative time here. Also too, she has the wrong people whispering in her ear from what I'm seeing here. I mean, I have this, this King of Wands here, this Seven of Swords, she seems to be burning a lot of bridges and cutting a lot of people off who actually like her. Um, and that is the biggest challenge that I think that she's gonna, next year, you'll see next year, next year there's a drought for her. Wow. But this year is still has some steam and some momentum. But right. interestingly yeah. enough, like once you plant certain seeds, they have to sprout. They, they, they're going to grow. Right. You, you no matter you, what you sow. So but but it's a wave and, and all of us can bounce back from that wave this year and next year, are both water years. So there's some volatility here. I think one of the challenges is, too, as a great comedian, um, I think you have to know when to turn it on, when to turn it off. And you also have to be able to read the room. She stopped reading the room a while ago as a fire sign and a Sagittarius. That could be a challenge, especially with regard to, you know, being a straight shooter. Um, right. 
So you have to know your audience. You also have to read the room. The climate has shifted for comedy. I, I, I have so much respect for comedians because especially the way we are behaving this way with our sensitivities and all the different political, social political changes, you guys have so much tap dancing to do to get a good joke across. I miss the era when Martin Lawrence would come on and just black, you know, and it was just, right. it was raw, it was raunchy, you know, and some more and, and other people that, you know, I grew up watching and, and it's not the same. So, you know, I personally don't feel like that, that, that I have to really adhere to those guidelines because I don't have enough eyeballs looking at me at any given time. So, <laughs> but it's something that I'm concerned about as, as you move forward, you know, that, the more eyeballs you get, the more you become a slave to the um, to the masses. Uh, I, I, I deliberately held this question. Um, so my mom went on as well. Uh, and uh, we had the, the, the conversation early, earlier about the urn. I know my mother is not here. Right? <laughs> I know that. And, and you said something earlier in terms of um, um, she's she's not dead. She's just not here anymore. I, I I had that revelation. So my family was around as we congregated on her last day or so. Uh, she came out of the hospital in, hospital into hospice, and again, I do believe she waited for me personally as her eldest and her friend. She waited for me to let her go. And I did. But I walked in the room and her body was there. And I was like, yo, I fucking got it. She was not no longer. She wasn't dead. She just didn't live in that body no more. And I was like, yo. Now, I, I still feel sad. I still miss her. But I know that's all my shit. Like, She's in a great place. So I say, I'll let to say this. I know she has visited me. We talked on the phone. Like I could hear her voice, but I was not talking. She was communicating with me in my mind. I could hear her vividly. Her voice was softer. She was younger. Um, so... I know she's okay, but does she know I'm okay? And my, my siblings. Yeah, well, so uh, I'm going to reframe kind of how I answer the question because of how it was given to me. One of the, the first things was that when you walked into that room and I'm, I'm seeing, did you touch her? She's showing me you holding her hand in some way. Did you touch her at some point? Probably was somebody, was somebody holding her hand. There's just that she's yeah. showing you yeah. her hand being held. But her consciousness, like you said, was not was no longer attached to that body. So she actually was. If you were in a different part of the room, then she seemed to be kind of near you. the mm -hmm. The question that you're asking is: Is she around you? Is that what you're asking me? Well, I, I know she, I don't know what I'm asking. I, I know she's around me. I think he wanted to know was does she know that they're okay? He and the siblings are okay because he knows she's okay. But does mom know that him and his other siblings are okay? Got you. What's your mom's name? Venice. 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 Got you. Give me a moment. Like Italy. Venice is in Italy. That's a great, great city. Great name. Give me a moment. Great energy. Did she spend a lot of time in the kitchen? She's. I'm, I'm finding her in the kitchen. That's the first place that she's where I, I seem to be finding her. Did she? Did she? Spend yeah. A lot of yeah. She. She cooked until she got older. Then she stopped cooking. But, but so, no. so once again, our loved ones, we can find our loved ones where we've always found them. If the kitchen is a place that yeah. that, uh, that they love, that's usually the first place they meet their loved ones when they cross over. So she's right. showing me at the kitchen. And she also seemed to be very much. Like I, I smell certain foods. Or if I go to like a soul food restaurant, and they got certain dishes. I'm like, that's my mom. Mm -hmm. she, yeah. she, she seemed to enjoy like tending and taking care of people, making sure everybody was was taken care of. True. Um, and 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 also kind of uh, what's the word I want to say? Offering encouragement. And she's saying that she's still doing that uh, from the other side for you and your siblings, offering encouragement, um, right. and also telling you guys right from wrong. <laughs> she's saying right from wrong. So. Hey, before you get out of here, when I go, when I pass and cross over, should I wear sneakers? Because I owe people money. <laughs> <laughs>
your money's no good on the other side. I promise you. I, you, 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 you're fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dex, how do people stay in touch, bro? Yeah, sure. Please uh, follow me at uh, Love Nine One One Tarot on Instagram and on Facebook. There's a link in my bio uh, if you're interested in having a private reading. If we didn't get to you today, and uh, tomorrow night on uh, Tuesday nights, every Tuesday night at eight o'clock, I also do live readings and my psychic lottery. So stop through if you can. Say hi. And for the month of June, you're offering one dollar. Yeah, one dollar. Do one dollar a minute readings uh, for the month of June, uh, starting yeah. today. As soon as I hop off, I'm gonna set the coupon up, and the link is in the bio as well. Are you going to do subscriptions or do you have subscriptions? I don't have subscriptions. A number of people have asked me about that. I have I have to kind of reconcile how people would schedule uh, their own VIP stop through my site. So I, I'm still working on whether or not okay. I'll do that. Great question. <laughs> wow. And th this person, Jeff Brown, is saying ladybugs are poisonous to pets, not humans. Actually, they're poisonous for predators. So if your pet tries to eat them, yes, your pets will be included, Jeff. So thank you for that. Man, that you layer. just destroyed ladybugs for me, man. First ducks, first Snoop Dogg destroyed ducks. <laughs> now you telling me ladybugs? No, oh, ladybugs are good. They're Listen. good, though. Oh, we got we got to get out of here. Dex, last question. <laughs> How successful will this show be? Uh, give me a second. So, so what do you what do you define as success? I think it, that that might be a great way to. I don't it. know. Um, may, maybe can I keep it up? Like, can I keep going? Yes, at least through the end of the year. From what I'm seeing yeah. here, I'm seeing the show, uh, a show in December. So, at least through the end of this year. Okay. Yes. Um, there's something large coming for you uh, next year. So, will, will we get a will we get a good sponsor? This year, like in the next two months, <laughs> I say yes. I, I know it's coming. That's a conditional question. I, I don't. I don't know if I can answer. The, the, it has to be in the next two months because the universe is wiser. But give me a moment. Closer to October, this fall seems to be once again, Shani, with you being executive producer of this platform, uh, this you're weakened in this season. You're, you don't get a bounce back until August, so uh, you can make plans, and you certainly can put feelers out, but you're not going to notice the feedback from the work you do right now until a little bit later. So pace yourself accordingly. And that's good. Wow. That makes thank, you, thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for cutting you guys off. Thank you, guys. It's been an amazing show. Shiny Scott on air producing the hell out of this show. Love 911 Terror, Mr. Dexter Kendrick. Doctor, here, poke your ass with a stick. <laughs> 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 my man JP Justice, thank you, brother. Michelle C, let me tell you something. Michael B. Jordan gonna be in that little fluffy bed you in for in no time. <laughs> hey, my name is Roddy Perry. This is Roddy Perry Live. We gotta go. America's number one funny man. Funny man. What? 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 what, what? Hey. Oh, Make some news, some noise, ladies and gentlemen, from LA, LA to New York, New York Chicago, Chicago to Mississippi. Mississippi. Let's give it up for America's number one funny.